Hi everyone, welcome to Electric Car Australia, the YouTube channel for Aussies wanting to know a little bit more about sustainable living and particularly electric mobility and electric cars. Well today's video is literally taking a look underneath our Australian model MG ZS EV. As I've said in a couple of my previous videos, I was a little bit apprehensive about the Chinese build quality of the MG ZS, but I've been pleasantly surprised. Um, we've owned the car now for a few weeks, oh sorry, a few months, and um, yeah, the more and more I look at it, a um, few little bits and pieces that aren't probably 100%, um, but most of it's pretty good. So today we're going to take you literally underneath, and we're going to have a look around at the chassis and the battery case, etc. But before we do that, um, we've got the front wheels on full lock and we're going to have a closer look underneath the wheel arches. So we'll see how close we can get you guys in. So this is obviously the front wheel with the distinctive EV alloy wheel pattern. Now we'll come in here under the wheel arch and okay, here we are. You guys will see the um, shock absorber in the center there and the spring. Now look, these, um, just looking at them, they're not overly heavy duty and you wouldn't expect that from a compact SUV. Um, but the particular things I was looking at was like the protection on the um, flexible brake line there. So you can see um, that's got a spiral um, protective cover. It is only plastic, it's not wire. Um, but that does provide some protection to the, the flexible hose. Um, you'll see there the um, one of the little mounts there has um, got a nice little rubber um, connection there where it goes into the um, metal frame. Everything's nice and solid. Um, these are all nicely clipped in, these metal brake lines here. We don't have, um, we don't have things just floating around. And you'll notice this um, body sealing here as well doesn't look the neatest um, but there's certainly a lot of it and it covers all the metal joints in the car so yeah could be a little bit neater in the, the presentation um, but at least it's there and it works as I've mentioned before this car is quite quiet so lots of sound deadening and you'll see some of that sprayed on there coming down here to some of the uh, steering arms so you've got your um, drive arm there to the front wheels ball joints etc so all that looks quite good it's all um, painted quite well and yeah like I say it's it's lightish duty um, but for the the vehicle and what it's made for I think it's quite capable there's your CV joint um, boot there you know that's seems reasonably good good quality good seals on them there So that's the driver's side. Um, let's come around to the passenger side. So I've mentioned this before. Um, these have standard really good tyres. So these are a Michelin um, 21550R17. And these are a Primacy 3. So they're, um, they're a really good quality tyre. So it was impressive to see those on the MG as standard. So coming in under the wheel arch here, obviously same suspension setup. Um, we've got some sort of little control arm there. Um, again, little rubber boots on it. Time will tell to see the quality of these and how long they, they last, but just at first glance, uh, looks okay. So that's your, um, your gas pressurized uh, strut spring again at the top. And like I said, that's all reasonably well sealed up in there. You've got plastic cowls etc here everywhere and that's looking over into your engine bay so there's your gearbox at the end the silver alloy part there you've got your drive shaft coming out obviously the MG ZS EV is a front wheel drive so there's your CV joint at your wheel and I can't see what I'm filming here but hopefully that's the back of the brake caliper so that's the disc brakes swing back in under um, that's your air compressor, sorry, your air conditioning compressor right in front. So that's a nice big chunky bit of gear. So obviously that runs off your electric motor. 
Okay, so that's it under the wheel arches, and we'll duck under and see what we can see once we get down into the um, mechanics pit in the, um, the shed, and we'll see what's underneath. Well, here we are down in the garage at the farm, and before we put the car over the pit, I just thought I would show you what it looks like. Um, so here it is. It's the mechanic pit in the floor of the garage. So um, normally, obviously, has these ply timber lids over them, stop the kids and anyone else falling down in there. But there it is. So basically it's a concrete hole in the ground, looks a bit like a bunker. And um, yeah, we drive the car in over top of that with the boards removed and it allows you to work underneath the car. Um, these were the, the um, thing that people used before you had hydraulic lifts and uh, four post ho hoists and all that sort of stuff these days. So yeah, basically you dug yourself a hole in the ground and uh, that allowed you to get under the car. So let's bring the ZSEV in and have a look underneath. Well, here we are, we're in the shed. We've got the car overneath the pit. So let's go down the ladder and see what we can see. Okay, well, first thing to notice, just get rid of these glasses, is it's amazing how clean new cars are. So obviously this one's only a couple of months old, and there is the electric motor. What a giant. So you can see some stats on it there. Hopefully you guys can read that. So... Maximum speed, 10,000 revs per minute. Maximum 30 minutes power is 68 kilowatts. So obviously you can deliver 68 kilowatts for only 30 minutes. Rated voltage is 394 volts DC. Now I've noticed when the battery's fully charged and it's warm after a rapid charge, it's generally up around the 430 volts and it'll drop down to about 390 uh, 385 um, as it's getting down. So that goes to show the fluctuation um, of the, the voltage of the battery. IP67, so a bit of water is not going to worry this one. And I should have started at the top. It's a 105 kilowatt motor with 353 newton meters of torque. So yeah, look, that looks um, all nice and clean. It is a little bit open down there. So you'll notice this plastic cowling around here. Um, but where that actual motor is, is, is open, and I'm assuming that's to get a bit of airflow sort of up in there. That is your gearbox. So at the end of the big electric motor here, that's your, your alloy housing of your gearbox. And that's obviously your drive lines coming out to the driver's wheel over there. And this one just buried by some cowling, etc. That's your passenger's drive line coming out there. So yeah, just as an observation, the castings are a little bit rough. Um, you won't see that there, but you know, at the end of the day, they look okay. Um, but yeah, a little bit, a little bit roughish. Um, nice secure mounts. So I don't know what some of these are called, but that's a big, big rubber mount, like an engine mount there. Looks good. Um, that's where our steering column comes out of the, the cab. So that looks nicely sealed um, through there. As you'll notice again, up in there is all that um, sealant, sort of auto sealant stuff. Nice. Comes down into your uh, steering and I just forget what that's called, but that's your, your steering control arms sort of thing, your power steering box so that looks okay and that runs out onto these control arms so that's your, your steering again that looks okay don't worry you'll see a little bit of sort of surface rusty stuff there don't worry about that that's just it's not rust rust that's just surface rust that's the inside of your brake caliper on the inside so that's the caliper and actually that caliper is quite impressive that's that's quite big 
quite a big caliper that, uh, considering this isn't a race car. Um, there's your discs, so four wheel disc brakes on these, which again is, is impressive. I think the Nissan Leafs, uh, particularly the younger ones, um, only had drum brakes and I think the Renault Zoe had drum brakes as well on the back, so good to see MG put discs on. There's some of your high voltage cabling, so don't know what that one is, and there's the phone. So leave the phone ring. Don't know what that box is, obviously looks high voltage, um, some pretty heavy duty cables and clips going in there. Um, so that's at the back of your firewall. Um, the connections look all good, cabling, um, that one's not too bad, could probably have a, a little rubber boot around it there, would be better for a little bit of water and dust protection, but okay. Um, that looks like some little cooling cooling device up in there. Um, that one's a pressure valve by the looks or something to do with your air conditioning. You may not be able to see that up in there, but there's another big cast engine mount up in there with rubber boots on it. There's your air compressor or your compressor for your air conditioning. So it compresses the refrigerant. And what I might do actually, I'll pop the bonnet um, and that'll let a little bit of light in at the top and we might be able to see the radiators and that a bit better. There's the two little uh, water pumps um, that run the coolant. So look at that, that's a Bosch pump. Um, put the camera around so you can read that. Not sure whether it'll focus. So yeah, look, that's a Bosch pump. Um, it's made in China, it's got the safe motor on it, but um, it is a Bosch branded pump, so it's good to see that they've got some of that branding in there. So yeah, we'll pop the bonnet and it'll get a little bit more light. So here's the battery, or we're getting down towards the back of the car. Um, so again, nice, uh, lots of seal in around here, sound deadening, etc. Um, rubber boot there. So look, all this looks pretty good. So for um, driving in Australia, um, particularly if you've got, we've got a lot of gravel roads obviously in Australia and dust, this all looks pretty pretty good and sealed okay. That's up under your, your doors. Again, it's not the neatest, cleanest look, but that looks all, all quite good. So this one's plastic. We've got a little bit of grass seed up in there already. Um, that one's plastic, not sure what's under there. We can unclip this one. Oh no, we've got a screw there. Actually, I might come back with a screwdriver and we'll pull that one out because that looks like that's the main terminals into the battery. So we'll pull that one out in a second so you guys can have a look. So under there, that looks like it's your um, control sort of wiring plug-in stuff for the battery. So we'll have a look at that shortly. This is your actual battery bank all under here. So these are a protective cover. Um, that's metal. They've got the little security pins and I'm certainly not going to pull those out um, today. I don't want to start playing around with that. But that's nice and strong. So that's protecting your battery. Um, so we've got one, two, three big protective plates. There the batteries are sitting in an alloy. That looks like a an alloy, I don't know what you call it, saddle or um, big mount, but they've got nice big bolts bolting onto the chassis. So there's multiple ones are there. So just running down the side of the vehicle, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So there's five of those big mounts to carry the, um, the weight of the batteries. So that's, that's good. And we've got some little visitors to come to see what Dad's doing. So we'll see if they... Um, Stay quiet for us for another couple of minutes. So this is at the back of the car looking forward. So there's our battery bank. Um, oh, this is good. So this is the back of the, the battery. So obviously your battery cells are sitting in this cast alloy box, or I guess you'd call it. Um, and you can see where this was a designed as a petrol car. So this mount here, this aluminium hanger here, um, actually, that's a steel hanger with the aluminium battery backs box mounted to it. You can see how this has sort of been fabricated and built in 
uh, from the petrol vehicle. So again, that's the uh, metal brake line. So you can see that's got a good little rubber mount there. These are all mounted well. So if you are taking these, and I certainly don't suggest you take these vehicles off road, but on gravel, corrugated roads, etc., these look like they're quite, quite sturdy. There's little plastic clips holding everything. So that's quite good. Again, that spray on sound deadening, rust proofing there. Don't know what they are. Something to do with maybe seats upstairs. There's the rubber grommet. And I can't even see that, but that's the top of the battery. So whatever you guys are looking at there is the top of the battery bank. And before we pull those couple of panels off, this is just the back axle. So that's your, your back spring. Spring, shock absorber, rear disc. And there's a cross member running the width of the cross car. And another bit of a cow. Sorry guys, it's a bit difficult to hold this camera. There's a bit of a cow up the back there. So, hopefully that's been interesting so far. Let's go and grab a screwdriver and um, we'll take a couple of these cowls off and see what's underneath them. Here we go, we're back and here's an example of all of our creepy crawlies in Australia. There is a massive spider sitting there and um, he's not gonna move. Anyway, he's gone under there, we'll, we'll leave him there. Now, we are 15, 20 minutes later, and anyone that knows anything about farms, you'll know that there's uh, multiple sheds on farms, tools everywhere, machinery that needs fixing, fences, all that sort of stuff. So to find the right tools to just pull those half a dozen um, bolts out and a medium-sized screwdriver took me 20 minutes. The screwdriver, the most basic tool, we would have 10 of them here on the farm. Do you think I could find one? No chance. Anyway, all good, finally found everything. So, as a bit of an EV geek, this is really cool. There is your high voltage connection to the batteries. Look at the size of that thing. Now, this is one part of this car I would never be fiddling with at all. But that there is obviously um, some sort of secure locking mechanism. So you'd pop that down and that would release that and then you would take these screws out. If you knew what you were doing and you were working on this um, battery bank, you can see the manufacturers put a little mark um, once it's locked and sealed up. But yeah, look, very interesting. We've got 32 pin there. Um, we've got positive there, negative there. So that's obviously your uh, lines going in or out, um, your OBC cable, that one, MSD, not sure what that one is, might be, it looks like you might be able to plug something in to uh, read it. There's some lines coming out, I'm assuming that's from inside the car, um, so probably controls, etc. You can see slightly back up into underneath the engine bay there. Um, but yeah, this is the sort of stuff I wanted to show you guys. There are the brake lines again, nice and secure, um, nice gaps, so they're not going to rub on anything, they're not going to break, they're flush, so they're not going to get hooked on sticks. So this is the sort of stuff that here in Australia we're probably a little bit more interested um, than European countries, etc., because we do have a lot of ordinary roads. Um, I think in the UK they call them B roads, etc., with sticks and branches and rocks and things. So, yeah, these are all reasonably well protected. And keep in mind, this actually had a plastic cover that I've, I've pulled off. So, back to the battery. So, there we go. As I said, for nerd, nerd material, this is awesome. See if I can adjust that camera a little bit more for you guys. So yeah, we're saying SAIC motors there. Battery, ASM-HV for high voltage. Chinese made. MG 110 amp. BMS is dash 02. So I'm assuming that's the type of BMS in it. 
And what's that brand up in there? I can't actually read what that is up in there. It's like a little brand. So yeah, this is obviously the, the front electric control panel. Here's your cooling lines. So again, this is really interesting to see as well. So those cooling lines, and we'll go back and have a look um, with the bonnet up, see so a little bit of light. So they're insulated, insulated cooling lines. They're coming down here into the batteries. Obviously, again, that's protected. Oh, look, here's a big earth strap. So there's a, a big earth strap, earth pin. So that's earthing the battery box, I guess you'd call it. Back to the chassis of the vehicle. And there you can really clearly see that, that big cast alloy box that's protecting the battery. So as you might know, electric cars um, generally handle better than um, fossil fuel or diesel petrol cars because this heavy battery is in the, the base of the car, so a lower sense of gravity. And they're also safer in a crash because if you've got a side impact, this big heavy battery bank is sitting here, which obviously helps protect the occupants. And as far as fires, you'll hear people talk about fires on electric cars and batteries bursting into flames. The um, overall percentage of that happening is far, far lower than electric or, oh, sorry, petrol or diesel cars bursting into flames. Um, you'll know obviously that petrol and diesel is a lot more flammable, um, particularly petrol, than um, a well-protected lithium-ion battery with all the protections, etc. So look, that's about it from the um, battery. So this is the case I pulled off, um, nice and easy, half a dozen M10 bolts, took that one off. Um, that's a great little idea, so that little um, flap you can see there, that's the little cover that allows you to get into this without taking the whole thing off. That's got a little strap hangy thing on it so it doesn't fall off, which is a perfect idea. I actually, my heart dropped because when I pulled this off, that was obviously up in there, I was pulling it off and then something fell out and landed on the ground. I thought, oh no, I've lost something. It was actually just a little stone that was sitting up in there. So that was good. Okay, so bonnets up. You'll see a little bit more now up in there. So there's the two uh, Bosch pumps that help pump your coolant around. And yeah, that's great. You can see that. So look at all this pipe work. All that's cooling pipes. And there they are coming out of um, one of those header tank things up there. They're coming down here, and there they are there, those two lines, and they're going down into the battery. So that's those two there. So that's good to see that. Um, these ones here are air conditioning, so they're different. They look the same, but they're actually different. Um, you can see the main chassis rail there. It's um, it's well primed and undercoated, like you can see through the white paint, so, but I wouldn't be too worried about that. It's, it's nicely sealed, and these would be galvanized steel anyway, um, but that, that's certainly painted with the white paint. There's your radiator. There looks like some front collision sensors there. That's the um, front of the air conditioning compressor again. Yeah, so there's your cowl on your fan, your electric fan. I don't really think there's much more I can show you guys. I could take this panel off, but I'm going to be lazy today and not do it. There's a lot more screws on that one. I need, um, yeah, and I think that would show a couple of different radia radiator cores. So just looking down at the top, it looks like um, there's a couple of different ones, which makes sense because you've got your air conditioning and then you've got your cooling system for your electric motor, batteries, etc. Um, so there may be more than one core in that radiator there. Okay, well I can see some little feet coming in, so they've been nice and patient and been nice and quiet um, for you guys. So I'm gonna go back and we'll probably have a game of outdoor cricket, um, considering it's coming up to Australia Day. So thanks for watching guys. If you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help us um, 
rise up the YouTube rankings. Share it with your friends, anyone that you think would be interested in electric cars or sustainable mobility. And also check out our other social pages. So we're slowly building up our um, Twitter, our Instagram, and our Facebook will also be live in the next few weeks. So thanks again, stay safe, and we look forward to bringing you another video on the MG ZS EV shortly. Cheers, guys.